Today's guests are teacher and athletic director Darren Reisig and school principal Peter Westaver. Gentlemen, welcome to the show today. Thank you for having us. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Peter, school principal, I'd like to hear more about that. Do you enjoy it? Uh, absolutely. I do have, I would say, the best job in the school as, as principal of Claremont High School, which is in the Santa School District, very close to Victoria. And uh, we have a population of just over 1,200 and, uh, and, uh, and a staff of about uh, uh, 150. Wow. Yeah. So that's a pretty big school. Yeah. A lot of teenage uh, hormones running through the hallways every day. And every day is different. It's, uh, it's a remarkable, it's a wonderful uh, feeling. It's always a great culture to the school and uh, always I'm happy to be there all the time. How many years have you been doing that? 17 years as a, as a principal in the Saanich District and uh, this is my first year at uh, Claremont High School. So oh, I'm very great. happy to get going there. So did you know as a little boy you wanted to be a principal when you grew up? Well, as a teacher, absolutely. I, that came first, and then that uh, grew into be uh, the, the vision of being a principal, and I'm so happy, yes. Oh, you're blessed to do what uh, you love doing. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And Darren, you are the athletic coordinator or director at Claremont. What does that entail? Well, it entails uh, managing the school's athletic teams, um, which there are vast. We have over 35 teams, as well as helping with the academies. Academies are something that uh, started in the early 2000s in our school. Their kids apply to come to those specific academies to take their sport training within the school day and uh, still be in the school population as a regular student. Wow, so the academy is a big focus on a specific sport. So those kids maybe want to pursue that later and get more intensive training on that sport while still integrating it with all of their academics. Absolutely. It's, uh, it tends to be a passion for those, those students who want to you know, evolve into uh, a lacrosse player, a swimmer, a golfer, a rower, which are the sports we offer, and um, it allows them to do it daily and again within the school timetable, still not taken away from their uh, academic studies. Do you think having an academy actually encourages kids to stay in school and uh, keep their grades up? Absolutely. I think it's a level of engagement that um, for young teenagers that, that often aren't sure if they want to be at school or what they want to do at school, it gives them a level of engagement uh, immediately. Now, do all public schools have academies? Not, not all public schools. Um, what, happen, what we see nowadays is uh, kids will pick a school of choice and depending on the focus that, that school may have. So in our case with our academies, other schools may have a theater or um, other sports <coughs> or uh, disciplines, but it, uh, kids have a lot of choice nowadays. The days of the neighborhood school are not the same anymore. Kids can drive across town and, and attend a high school of their choice. Wow, that's great. It has changed from when I was a kid, but that's going back a few years now. I understand you guys are working on a project, an exciting new project. Darren, tell me about the vision for this. Well, the vision is to create a synthetic turf field. Um, that was the original vision in the early 2000s to help compensate for a, a field that is not usable 12 months of the year. Um, that vision has evolved and grown into an outdoor wellness center uh, that would include a new turf field, beach volleyball, walking trails, a new track, as well as a subsidiary building to the school that would support these programs. Wow, that sounds amazing. It also sounds like it might be expensive. It's an ambitious thought. We're hoping to get there. So do you have a committee together that's already starting to work on this? Uh, we have, uh, through Peter's help, we have created a committee. It's called the, uh, the, the project itself is called the Agora Project, and uh, currently we have seven members involved in that uh, society. So the Agora Project, Peter, where did that name come from? Well, the name came from, when you think of the Greek mythology, the School of Claremont, who are known as the Spartans. So we wanted to play on, on that theme. And Agora meaning essentially a, a gathering place for community to come together in a marketplace, um, to, to just to, to, to be as community as one. So the Agora uh, would be the facilities adjacent to the school as a meeting place and for ath athletes to train. So it sounds, it sounds like a, a great facility for your students, but also for the community at large, where everybody can come together and benefit from this project. The hope is to not only have the school benefit, but the community of all ages. Um, we, have, we have facilities that we're hoping to push for the younger children. We have facilities for the active athletes and, and students of Claremont, and then we're hoping to create the facilities for the community uh, of 55 plus to please come and be involved at the school and the facilities that are being used there. Well, this is perfect. So that leads me to, what's your big question for me today? 
We need some help in trying to find the funds to create this project. You need some money. We need so some money. So how do you get the money? How do you get Correct. <laughs> Don't go away. Find out the steps to a successful fundraising campaign when we return. The Wealthy Life is brought to you by investment dealer Raymond James. Life well planned. See what a Raymond James advisor can do for you. Welcome back. We're here with Darren and Peter to find out how they can raise money for an exciting community project. So before the break, we were talking about this exciting project with a new turf and walking trails and fitness equipment that not only the students can use, but the community at large of all ages. And you want to know, how do you raise the money for it? How much money do you need? We are being told by people in the business and those who are helping us, somewhere between two and three million dollars. For oh, the entire jump change, two or three million dollars. <laughs> so the one thing you need to do is just buy the winning lottery ticket and you're done. <laughs> that would be helpful. That would be nice. So will the school board help? Does the school board have money to pay for that kind of a project? Like a lot, lot, a lot of school districts and boards th throughout the provinces, um, but it's, budgets are tight. And uh, this would be an enhancement, a wonderful enhancement, but unfortunately a lot of districts don't dedicate funds specific to big projects like this. Yeah, and I mean, school boards are just like everywhere else. They don't yeah. have an endless pot of money to tap That's right. into. That's right. So then it's back to you guys. You formed a committee already. This Agora Society sounds great. Mm -hmm. Within that committee, the next thing you want to do is set aside a subcommittee called a fundraising committee, a fundraising group. Mm -hmm. and you'll need a chair of that group and you'll have a lot of other people underneath it. And there's a lot of different ways that you can raise the money you need. But I look at this as really a capital campaign. You need to raise a whole pile of capital to build this vision that will be such an enhancement, not only for the school and the students, but for the community. Yeah. Got it right? Taking notes. Okay, <laughs> so the uh, fundraising committee, the mm -hmm. first thing you want to do is set a goal. So it sounds like you already have an idea of how much it's going to cost. Yep. Maybe a little bit more work needs to be done to finalize it. And in doing so, you've talked about a lot of different things. There's the turf, there's a field house I think you mentioned, uh, there's the fitness piece, there's the trails. Have a look, does it all need to be done at once or can it be done in phases? Because if it can be done in phases, then you could maybe structure your capital campaign in phases. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I like to go for the easy money first, as we all do, or the big bucks. And so when you, once you've got your goal set, your fundraising goal, then you form a campaign around that. And I like to visualize a triangle. If you can picture a triangle where at the bottom, the base, that's the biggest piece, that's where you want to get some large dollars. And I would encourage you to approach the municipality, mm -hmm. approach the school board anyway, maybe there's mm -hmm. a, some kind of a tie-in, mm -hmm. and see if you can get some bigger chunks of money coming into that bottom piece. The next piece up is donors. And with your donor pool, also, you may have some alum, you may have uh, people who are well connected in the community who want to support this, who could write you a check for $250,000 mm -hmm. and maybe get some recognition, maybe not. Uh, but they just want to do it and they'll get a tax receipt. Mm -hmm. Then you maybe want to have a grant writer on your team because there's a lot of great grants either from government and or from a lot of nonprofit organizations who would support this kind of a project. So write some, writing good grants is important to get you some more money. And then as you work up the pyramid, then you look at other donors. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe it's just, it's the parents of the students <clears throat> and it's the community. And then you can have at the top maybe some smaller fundraising events. All those pieces come together and they come together nicely. And if you do it well and you ask in the right way, you can raise the two to three million dollars you need to make this project a go. Thank you. Does that make sense? That would be fantastic. Makes perfect sense. So your next step is to go get a campaign committee together mm -hmm. and off to the races. Thanks for being on the show today. Thank, thank you very you, much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Stay tuned. We're going to have the talk as it relates to families after the break.